No fucking script. We're going freestyle today. <laughs> For the build-up, I have the base render it. So without effects, it is like this. First, I have this frequency shifter, then this pixelator, then this Valhalla super massive, and this EQ to get rid of all the highs and all the low. Then I have this ambience, then this effects, and for the drums on the build-up, I have like nothing for real. And the pre-drop is really cool. <laughs> then on the drop I have this flow with the drums. Well, these claps are processed. This one and this one. Without the effect sounds like this. And with some distortion, this pixelator, this OTT, this disperser, and this EQ sounds like this. Then the other one with just a frequency shifter, some distortion, and this EQ boosting a little bit of the mids sounds like this. These two together sounds really really cool. My kick and claps are going to my drum bus where I have this punch that again as the Daya video I don't know what the fuck is happening. But well I also have this hi-hat pattern. Usually Hugh case go for a really really unique and weird pattern on everything like your drums, your bass pattern, your background effects. It's really like, I don't know. So obviously as you can tell by the title of the video, um, I made a Hugh K drop. So yeah, all of this together sounds like this. Okay, now let's talk about this sub bass. Well, firstly, I have my sub waffer on this. So let's turn that off and listen to the patch. Okay, basically the reading is on here is made by this oscillator A and B and this sub oscillator, so let's turn this off. I only have some distortion, like the drive is all the way up, some compression and this EQ. And with the saw wave and this score wave from the sub oscillator, it sounds like this. And with my sub wafer, it sounds really cool. So that's basically the sub. With the drum, it sounds like this. And that's it for the sub bass. Uh, then I have this background shit. That with the sub bass together sounds like this. It's a sample, I don't know out of what. It's an automated bass without effects sounds like this. <laughs> That's crazy. I first put an OTT, then this distortion, then this frequency shifter going almost all the way down. Then I have this EQ getting rid of some harsh frequencies and some highs. Then I have a house super massive. Then this OTT again. And finally, some EQ in. And that's giving it the like, not the flow, but you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, so you don't get confused for the drop because, as I'm saying, Hyuki goes really crazy with his flows on his music. So that's why I wanna like emphasize in quarter notes how the drop is going. Then let's go for the main bass, that is this shit. Uh, not complicated, I'm gonna turn the effects off. Originally sounds like this. Basically, I pitched it down. I put the pogo a little bit up. I play with the ring modulation mix and the frequency. So we're playing a little bit with the with the sample, but the thing comes here on the post processing. I have this transient shaper first. So I get rid of the transient because usually what I've listened on some Hyuki songs is that his bass is not like picky. It's more like wobbly. That's what I wanted to do with this transient shaper. Then I have an OTT. Then some distortion. This disperser, this frequency shifter that I am automating right here. And I have this EQ, pretty crazy. I'm boosting a lot of the mids because I want some really heavy distortion with this sine distortion. Then I have an OTT. And finally some EQ to get rid of all the lows. 
well finally i have this frequency shifter that it's only like this and i'm automating this mix level for the second part of the drop so it gives a different tonality to it so it has been pretty simple so far uh, let's talk about this flow uh, it's pretty like crazy let's like not remake it but i'm gonna like explain you how basically i thought about this so as a foundation we have this right so now we have the bass so we can play with the flow what i'm doing right here is while i'm moving my mouse with the sample so i can make something like this you can like really play around with the sample like moving it around like this I make some cool flows I don't know I'm, I'm just gonna like and basically that's how I made that flow we have here obviously on theory you have to be like consistent on the flow you have on your bass because if you go really really crazy like randomly and really randomly playing around with the flow it's not gonna be like understandable in a way so you can miss the listener you want that to have a call and response obviously and also you want to have a really catchy flow as you can tell this is not like really ear candy and not catchy at all but for some people this is what they want that's why they listen to UK. so you have this call and the response and then i have copy and paste this right here as a call again and then another response and then we have another call a variation from this one so that's why everything sounds like really in the same world so that's what you want for your drop and basically when you have already done the first part of the drop the second one is gonna be easy because you copy and paste it and maybe you do some variations to it but that's it basically and i don't like it but I i'm really talking here about theory a lot but this is what you have to think about while making your drop and if you want a drop in the style of uk you have to think about this then in the second part of the drop i didn't like over complicate it i just made this without any effects this sounds like this I have this patch, okay? You have this first sine wave, then you have the oscillator B, and you're doing FM from B on the oscillator A. What I'm doing right here is with the LFO one, I'm modulating the active of the oscillator B. Then we have the sub oscillator, and on the oscillator B, we are doing FM from sub. And right here on the oscillator from the sub, we have a square wave and four octaves down. So we have this ringy shit. What I'm doing right here is with the LFO2, I'm modulating the FM from sub. Okay, without it, sounds like this. But if you go and increase the FM from sub, listen to it. So that's pretty basic. I'm playing this D4 note, but if we go lower over here. So yeah, that's basically what I made. I basically will edit and hit record and sample it. I'm basically like stretching a little bit of the sample because I wanted this to be on grid. As you can see, we have this bit with this bit, this one with this one. I know you're not seeing my mouse, but uh, you can understand what I'm saying, right? So on the post-processing, we have just some disperser some ott and this eq getting rid of the lows on the second part of this b part we have this sound that is basically this frequency shifter i automated this mix level and that's it and the last thing i have here is basically these like breaks on the middle of every part right here Basically, the same shit I sometimes explain is the stereo separation here automated to make it a little bit mono so you can spread the stereo back when you want the drop to hit back again. And then we have this mix level that is on the sidechain channel to all the things you have routed to any of these channels I have here and the drop bus are routed to the sidechain. So that means that each of these channels and any sound that is routed to here is going to be sidechained and affected by this EQ. So yeah, I'm basically just automating the mix level of that EQ and the stereo separation on the master easy clap